Chris, as a respiratory therapist, can you tell me how you fit into the care team? Sure. You know, our job is to really monitor you uh, on an ongoing basis from when you go home um, and make sure that your needs are met consistently. Um, we do regular assessments of you to see that your needs are being met. We convey all of that information back to the doctors at the, uh, at the center where you attend. And um, we just work with them and other members of the team it's a comprehensive program and we all interact with one another when we're making decisions about your care. I've heard a lot about all the equipment related to respiratory support so far. I've only had uh, experience with the Trilogy. That's all I've needed so far, but I understand there's a lot of other equipment. Can you walk me through, the, through those and you know what, what are they? When would I need to use them? So let's talk about all these different devices. Um, you're already familiar with the Trilogy. Um, we refer to that as a non-invasive ventilator. Some people still call it a BiPAP. Um, so what does that do? Um, it uses different pressure levels when you breathe in and breathe out. So talking about the Trilogy, um, Ken, this is really a, a, a demo, a setup of it here. And uh, Donna and Lindsay are gonna go through the process. Uh, once we've educated somebody uh, about how and why and when to use it. Um, the basic setup goes as we connect the air filter to the side of the device first, and that gets changed periodically. And then next we connect the uh, patient tubing. And from there then we connect whatever mask has been selected from the patient. And again, there are many different types of masks, multiple sizes of each type, and we work with folks to figure out which one is the best. And we show you how to apply the mask. Um, the point that we're trying to emphasize here is we want it to be as comfortable as possible for the wearer. And uh, we want it to be comfortable with not too tight of a fit. Um, but not too loose so that we have an adequate leak that is not excessive. We want to make sure it's not blowing in your eyes or anything like that. And once we turn the device on, as Donna just did, um, there's usually a little bit of adjustment of the settings. Uh, the therapist will communicate with the patient to find out, uh, you know, is it flowing too fast, too slow? Do they feel comfortable with the actual respiratory cycle of the machine? And various adjustments will be made, and sometimes that goes on for several minutes to even an hour, but uh, usually we get it fairly quickly. And uh, then we instruct the patient, again, how to use it and when to use it. The goal is typically to wear your Trilogy at night while you're sleeping, and then as needed during the day if you feel comfortable doing so. So the next device that uh, we're going to talk about is, is a cough machine. And why would you need a cough machine? Uh, as, as your respiratory muscles weaken over time, um, it gets harder for you to take a deep breath. It gets harder for you to push that cough out. Um, and what happens is you start to have a buildup of um, secretions in your airways and that further makes uh, breathing difficult. And so the device we're looking at here is the Philips T70 cough assist. And um, setting it up is pretty much uh, very much like using a Trilogy. And then we use a different type of mask. It doesn't have straps. We don't strap this on to anybody. It's either held in place um, by the patient themselves, or it could be held in place by the caregiver. Either will work. And you know, there is a learning curve to this therapy, both in terms of how to use it and when to use it and what's comfortable and what's not. Everybody develops their own sort of methodology. We're here to give you advice and get you started with it. Um, but we see a lot of people do it a lot of different ways. Whatever works for you that provides effective therapy, that's what works. And, and we'll, we'll work with you on that. And we place the mask on the patient's face and we instruct them to take a deep breath, and cough out, deep breath and cough out again, deep breath and cough out again. And then we have them remove the mask from their face and we suspend therapy. And that's one set of three. Generally, we try to encourage people to do three sets of three 
at a time, just like that. After a moment or two of rest from the first three, we can go ahead and do the next set. Activate therapy once again, and it's the same thing. And then we remove the mask and suspend therapy. Now, if you feel like there's some more um, secretions or something still in your airway that you need to get out, you can certainly continue to do this. Um, but we want you to be reasonable. Don't overdo it. Don't hyperventilate yourself, but certainly use it as much as you need. We'll talk about the suction machine. Um, and over time, if you start to develop that inability to swallow or um, speak, uh, oftentimes you use the cough machine and it brings up all of these secretions that we talked about. And if you can't clear them out, can't get them from the back of your throat, uh, we give you a suction machine, which is if you've been to the dentist, you know how they have the little hook with the suction in your mouth. It's very similar to that. And you can use that to clear out all of that stuff that comes up with the cough assist. And we'll turn it on briefly here for a moment, just so you can hear it. It's fairly loud. So um, we'll run it for a moment. Think of this as like going to the dentist and you can see on the device that there's a canister on the side that will trap any of the secretions or saliva that you do need to um, evacuate from your mouth. Um, and we do that, that is connected to the pump. And then on the other side, it's connected to that very long tubing. And then in turn, we use what we call a yonker suction tip or an oral suction tip. And that goes to into your mouth. And if you do manage to have some secretions come up with cough assist. You just use that like you were going to the dentist and everything will clear out. Voxin is what they call a multifunction ventilator. Voxin is relatively new to the market um, and it is the first and only multifunction ventilator. And the name Voxin stands for ventilation, oxygen, cough, suction, and nebulizer. So it does all five of those therapies uh, in, in a single box. Um, and even though it's uncommon uh, in ALS, it does have the ability to provide some supplemental oxygen and nebulizer therapy. Um, and certainly advantageous to have that available should the need arise. Um, but it's fairly similar in its operation to Trilogy. Um, but much easier in terms of cough and suction because everything's integrated and it's all touch screen control. Basically, if you can run a smartphone, you can run a box and with a little bit of training from your therapist. Um, and so the application again is fairly similar. They do have a different style filter that goes into it and it just twists into the side. Um, when we are using it non-invasively with a mask, we use pretty much the same tubing as we use on a Trilogy uh, and or a cough assist. We apply the mask and we make sure that it fits properly, meaning not too tight that it's uncomfortable and not too loose that it can't perform properly. If we wanted to do cough assist therapy, we simply hit the therapy button. We go to the cough section and we have three different presets here. Um, in this case, we have them set up as sort of a low, medium and high. And right now we're gonna go ahead and do a low setting with Lindsay. Um, and that involves simply touching the button. And doing the same coaching, inhale, exhale, deep breath, and cough. And I had that preset for three breaths or three cough cycles and it stops and it just resumes ventilation automatically. So you don't even have to come off of your mask to do this. They call it touch button cough and it's fully integrated. It's seamless and very easy to operate. As you just saw, there's no removing one mask and getting a different device. It's all right there at your fingertips. And then lastly, that we're gonna talk about right here 
is suction. And so all we have to do, there's a canister on the side, similar to what we had before on the stationary setup. Um, and everything else from there is exactly the same as we've already discussed. And in order to activate suction, we simply touch the suction button on the therapy page and we hit start. And if we needed to, we could remove her mask and go ahead and do some suctioning. Um, and again, if we needed to, it can provide the equivalent of about six liters of oxygen flow. Um, and it does have a fully integrated nebulizer system. And that really, that's a very basic discussion of box and it's very feature rich. It does a lot of different things. Are these technologies relatively easy to learn how to use or pretty complicated? I was, I was pretty intimidated by the trilogy, to be honest. Uh, uh, and I can't imagine how complicated some of the other uh, machinery might appear to be at first glance. These devices can seem to be intimidating, but remember they are designed for home care use, right? and, and there are a lot of complex features uh, in the clinical menus of these devices that typically you won't even have access to, right? That's the job of, of us as respiratory therapists to go in and make all of these adjustments, ensure that your needs are being met, ensure that we're doing it in as comfortable a manner as possible. But frankly, once we get everything dialed in, the hard work is over, the day-to-day -day usage of these devices is, is, is relatively simple and, and, and easy to learn for the vast, vast majority of our patients and their caregivers. How often do those settings need to be adjusted by you, by the respiratory therapist? Well, and again, that's why it's important that you're seen regularly. We may not make setting changes for months or even in some cases, years at a time. They just go along and they're comfortable. Um, but on the other hand, if, if things are changing rapidly, we'll be making changes as you need them to be. Um, and again, don't be shy about asking us if, if you're feeling like there's a change and something's not right, let us know because we, we need to help you with that as soon as possible. What if I just find one of the devices really uncomfortable or hard to use? Uh, in full disclosure, when I was first provided the trilogy, uh, I struggled. We fought uh, for two months. Uh, I just could not get in sync with the machine. I imagine a lot of other people initially have trouble with it too. How do you, what kind of advice do you give? It's not a natural thing to put this mask on and try to breathe with it. And, and it's our job as your respiratory therapist to try and make it as comfortable as possible. There is always an adjustment period. And you know, whether it's a mask issue, whether it's a respiratory cycle issue like yours, um, those are things that we have to help you work through. There are other devices out there, and, and, and if you ultimately were not successful in that, um, then we would move on to something else in consultation mm -hmm. with your physician. Say, hey, you know, we just can't seem to get it done here. Can we try a different device? Um, but that's well, our job as your therapist. Chris, can you talk a little bit about uh, how all these technologies will be paid for? Which ones will be clearly covered by Medicaid or insurance? Insurance, I can't say 100% of the time, but they almost always will cover at least a portion of it. And, and when you get into commercial private plans, they all have different co-pays. Um, Medicare, of course, pays for 80% of anything that they cover. And then the 20% is either up to you, the beneficiary, or if you have a secondary insurance, people on Medicaid, uh, Medicaid typically pays for uh, everything completely. You don't have co-pays with that. But um, if you do have challenges, we tell people, you know, hey, work with your provider, your equipment provider. Their goal is not to come and pick up your equipment or tell you you can't have it. You know, we're here to work with you and make sure that your needs are met. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what, what we can and can't do in terms of traveling with the respiratory technology. Um, you know, what, can, we, can we travel anywhere with all of this technology or is it only the really easily portable stuff like a trilogy uh, that, that we can move around with? We want you to travel right? The, the, the goal here is to keep you mobile, keep you engaged with your life. Um, there's nothing more frustrating for me as a clinician than providing all of this really new mobile portable equipment 
only to find out that people just feel like they have to stay at home. That's absolutely not the case. What, yeah. what question have I not asked you uh, that I ought to be asking you as a respiratory therapist, things that I need to know as a person living with ALS and moving into uh, usage of this respiratory technology? One thing that I would always encourage you is reach out to us. Most everything that we do, we're doing before you need it. We don't want to wait until you're in a bind with something, you know, if you start having issues with coughing and you can't cough effectively and clear your throat, let us know. Cause that's, that's one of the things that we would use to add a cough machine to your regimen. Um, anything, things that you might think are insignificant there, they may not be, you know, be open, communicate to all of us on your healthcare team. What's going on with you. If, if you think it's a small thing, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Thank you so much, Chris, for, for walking me through uh, these issues on, on a, a very complex part of uh, ALS therapy, one that can be kind of intimidating for all of us uh, and a little bit scary as we start thinking about the need for respiratory support. Uh, very grateful for all you do for us and uh, for all the answers you've been able to give to us today. Thanks. Glad to be a resource anytime. You know that. Just uh, reach out. Again, no questions too small, and you know we're we're here. Uh, I, I can tell you, I've been working with ALS patients now for about 19 years, and every team member on every clinic that I've uh, been around, they're all passionate about it. They're all they're all there because they care, and, and and we all want the best for our patients. And you know, take that to the bank and and. You know, just lean on us because that's what we're here for.